Now it's no secret that champagne corks are devious little trolls whose sole idea of fun involves rocketing towards our eyeballs when we least expect it. But what happens when they actually connect? Are we guaranteed to go blind, or will our eyes live to see another day? Well, that is exactly what we were about to find out. I also have a special surprise at the end, which is probably gonna make our insurance company Ridge call us. Again. All right, it's time to take it to the lab. <laughs> Let's see what one of these corks can do to an eyeball. That was a bit too quick to see with the naked eye, so let's check the slow-mo camera. Yeah, that's painful. Oh, and now is probably a good time to mention that these are not human eyes. They're actually pig eyes. Oh no! Well, now we know what a cork to the eyeball looks like, but what does it mean medically? Now, to give you full disclosure, I am not a doctor. Quack. So to make sure I'm giving you good information, I called up my friend Dr. Peterson, who's an MD, PhD, and first-year ophthalmology resident aka a really smart eye doctor guy. It looks like there's a corneal abrasion where the clear version of skin on top of the cornea has been ripped off. Thankfully, most of the time, this kind of injury will heal in a couple days. Well, that's an encouraging start, but what about the inside of the eye? Well, to check that, we'll have to cut the eyeball open, so fair warning to your queasy knees. Luckily, I have my handy portable microscope and my even more portable fat PP pocket knife, which, by the way, we're selling on our YouTube store. Link in the description. Now, let's take a look at the inside of this eye. The retina looks fine to me. And then the iris also again looks fine to me. So looking at the outcome overall, the majority of the cases with this uh, would probably be okay. Well that's really encouraging to hear, but we're not done yet. After all, the whole point of champagne is to shake it up and spray it everywhere. So let's see what a shaken bottle can do. This bottle definitely sprayed a lot more champagne, but what did it do to the eye? This cranial abrasion is bigger, which could mean a worse outcome. Everything else in this eye looks about the same as the other eye. That's good news, but I was honestly expecting this eyeball to be worse off. After all, the shaken bottle felt a lot more powerful. But interestingly, when we compare the two tests side by side, we can see the corks are actually shot at the same speed, about 33 miles per hour. So what's going on here? Well, long story short, both bottles still have the same pressure. This is really counterintuitive, but Veritasium has a great video about it, which I'll link in the description. What this means practically is that an unshaken bottle is just as likely to shoot the cork as a shaken one. So as soon as you even start to remove the cage, make sure to never point it at anything you care about, especially your face. Now let's get back to our experiment. Remember at the beginning when I said I had a special surprise? Well, here it is. In between all the celebratory champagne popping, we measured the internal pressure of a fresh bottle and found it was about 98 PSI, which made me start to wonder. How much pressure can a champagne bottle hold and what would happen if we shot the cork at that pressure? So let's start by figuring out how much pressure a champagne bottle can hold before it explodes. All right, max pressure test. 100, 200, 300. 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. Are you kidding me? Okay, so now we know these bottles can hold up to 800 PSI, which seems like a ridiculously high pressure for a material we consider fragile like glass. I'm holding a tray, like a bottle. Oh, for reference, those really durable rubber tires that hold your two-ton car off the ground can only withstand about 200 PSI before they burst. But that's an experiment for another day. So let's get back to the action. Now we're gonna pressurize one of these bottles nearly to its limit and shoot that cork into an eyeball. This footage is absolutely brutal. The cork hit the eyeball at about 57 miles per hour and the eyeball basically exploded, sending eyeball juice flying everywhere. Not only that, but the force of the champagne spray blew the eyeball all the way across the room. And when I found it, I almost wished I hadn't. In my unqualified opinion, this looks absolutely horrifying. But let's see what a professional has to say. Good God, this poor pig. You see a globe rupture here, which is just a fancy way of saying your eyeball busting open. This is probably the worst thing that could happen to your eyeball. This looks like a retinal detachment here. The black part, the film of the eye is kind of peeled off. And this could be really catastrophic. If it's in the center of your eye, forget about it. So overall, it's not looking good. If they had bad vision after getting hit by the cork and then they had this, the odds are very, very much against them ever getting full vision back. 
Luckily for most people, this outcome is impossible with normal champagne bottles, but for our paintball and airsoft players out there, this should be good motivation to always, always, always wear your eye pro. Now we've done a thorough job assessing these injuries, but it goes without saying that pigs are not humans, and eyeball specimens are not live eyeballs, which means there are certain types of injuries we just can't replicate in a lab setting. So as with everything, take this experiment with a grain silo full of salt. But I digress. All that's really left to do is donate the extra champagne to a worthy cause, and ethically dispose of the pig eyes by giving them a proper burial at sea. Oh yeah, and to thank you guys for making it this far through the video, use this discount code for 15% off a of fat pee pee. Now for those of you who already have a fat pee pee, good on you. But for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's an EDC microblade that we custom engineered after being unable to find a knife that was just the right size. After all, most knives are either too big to carry comfortably, or are just designed for, uh, different tastes. So we took matters and our fat peepees into our own hands. This knife is big enough for nearly every task, but small enough that when you aren't using it, it disappears into the smallest pocket on your jeans. So check out our online store to stuff a fat peepee in your pants, and I'll see you in the next video.